everyone, in this video I'm going to speak about pulse field gel electrophoresis or PFGE. I'm going to speak about the technique, um, the principle of it and how does it work. So let's first um, say what is PFGE. Actually PFGE or pulse field gel electrophoresis is a technique used to separate uh, DNA or nucleic acid. So it's very similar to agarose gel electrophoresis. And by the way, if you don't know what is agarose gel electrophoresis, you can go to, there is a previous uh, video in my channel, you can go there and watch uh, agarose gel electrophoresis. You can also find the link on the description of this video. So, PFGE is like agarose gel electrophoresis, so it's an agarose gel, it uses agarose, and then, um, as we said in the agarose gel electrophoresis video, we use elect an electrical field or an uh, electrical current to separate uh, DNA samples or D DNA uh, fragments according to their size. So uh, we apply, we use a battery, we apply an electrical current um, with a negative, uh, a negative charge on the top of the uh, gel and the positive charge on the bottom of the gel and then because the DNA or the nucleic acids are negatively charged so they will move toward the positive charge and then the small molecules will um, all the small fragments or of DNA will move farther and the uh, larger fragments of DNA will stick in the gel earlier. So what is, now this is agarose gel electrophoresis. The thing is that agarose, in agarose gel electrophoresis, we can separate a specific size of DNA. If the DNA uh, segments are so large, we cannot separate them because they will stick in the gel uh, earlier. So I will, I will speak about this uh, idea in a few seconds. So first of all, the PFGE is a technique we can say it's developed from uh, developed from uh, agarose gel electrophoresis because it depends on the same idea. But the thing is that PFGE is used to separate larger fragments of DNA molecules. You should know this. So. P the main idea of PFGE is to separate large fragments of DNA. Now. As I told you in uh, agarose gel electrophoresis, the small molecules or the small fragments of DNA uh, migrate uh, through the, the gel, so they can migrate uh, further. And then the larger the fragment is, the uh, less it can uh, migrate in the gel. And then. When the, when the DNA fragments are so large, they cannot migrate. So they, um, they form like a block, like several fragments form a block on the top of the gel because they cannot uh, be separated or they cannot migrate through the gel. The thing is that agarose gel electrophoresis can separate um, up to 15 to 20 kilobase pairs DNA, uh, DNA samples are up to 15 to 20 kilobase pairs. But if we have larger uh, DNA fragments and up to 10 megabase pairs, so M 10 MB, we can use uh, PFGE. Now, what's the idea of PFGE? Or let's say, what modifications did we do on agarose gel electrophoresis in order to, um, in order to make the uh, pulse field gel electrophoresis. First of all, it, the concentration of the agarose solution. So, as I told you before in the agarose gel electrophoresis video, the concentration of the agarose solution is very important because uh, it determines uh, the pore size. So you can imagine that the, this gel is a matrix because the agarose, when it's solidified, it forms a matrix, and this matrix contains pores inside. The more the solution is concentrated, um, the smaller are the pores inside. When the solution is less concentrated, then the, pore, the pores will be larger. So you can imagine that agarose gel electrophoresis is a bit like this. It's a, it's a, a, a condensed matrix. Uh, it's 2% matrix. Uh, what we do in pulse field gel electrophoresis is that we reduce the uh, concentration of the agarose to 1%. So it's, it will be like, like less condensed. So the pore size in, inside the uh, gel will be larger. And so the large uh, DNA samples can pass through these pores. 
So this is the first modification. Second modification, with the, which is the most important, is the direction of the electric field. So the thing is that in aqueous gel electrophoresis, we apply the, the electrical current in one direction, from negative to positive. Or let's say it's always from negative to positive, but let's say from the top of the gel to till the bottom of the gel in a vertical way. What we do in uh, pulse field gel electrophoresis is that we uh, uh, change the direction of the electrical field two times. The first one is in this direction and the second one is in that direction with 60 degrees angle between the direction and the vertical axis. So we can say that uh, the angle between the two other directions is 120 uh, degrees um, angle. Uh, now, what, why do we do this? I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. But let's first. So these are the two uh, most. These are the two important modifications uh, in pulse field gel electrophoresis. Now let's uh, let's see how do we do or what's the protocol of doing uh, pulse field gel electrophoresis. So how to perform it? First, we should have the bacterial cells because we want to take the um, uh, DNA samples from bacteria or from any kind of cell. So we have a cell culture. We take the cells from a cell culture and we put the cells inside the agarose solution. So in this tube, I have, an, uh, I have water, I add agarose, so I have an agarose solution. Um, I should dissolve the agarose and then I should add the, the, the cells inside the agarose solution. Now what I have is I have agarose solution with the uh, cells inside. So I uh, put the solution in a special container to get like a, a something we call the plug. So this is a plug, it's a gel, it's an agarose gel and it contains the cells inside. Now I take these plugs and uh, what I do is that I, I apply cell, uh, lyse, uh, cell lysis to the plugs by applying or by treating the plugs with a lysis solution. What, uh, what's going to happen then is that these cells are going to be lysed, so the cells are going to open and then going to get the DNA out of the cell, so DNA extraction. Everything is happening inside the gel, inside the plugs. Now I will have the plugs with the DNA samples inside. So I change the color because here I have plugs with cells inside and here we lysed the cells and get the uh, DNA out of the cells. Now what? What are we going to do now is, as we did in agarose gel electrophoresis, we don't need the DNA as it is. We want to cut the DNA in smaller frag or in smaller segments. Because we are interested in one gene, let's say, or in one chromosome. So I, I want to cut the uh, DNA to get the gene of my interest. Um, to do this, I apply restriction endonuclease enzymes. As I told you, in, uh, restriction endonuclease enzymes are enzymes that cut the DNA in specific um, places. What are we uh, going to get then is the, the plug with the... Um, uh, degraded DNA or the cut DNA, it's not degraded, it's cut uh, to smaller pieces inside. Of course, the pe these pieces of DNA are very large and because of this we are applying pulse field gel electrophoresis. Um, and now the question you might be asking is why did we do the DNA extraction and cutting inside the gel? So why don't we just do it uh, as we did in agarose gel electrophoresis? Why didn't we apply uh, cell lysis and, uh, and um, DNA cutting in a normal solution? And the answer for this is that high molecular weight DNA, so what we are dealing with in pulse field electrophoresis, is high molecular weight DNA, they are easily cleaved through shearing and imparts in very high solution viscosity. So, so they are easily uh, cleaved in high solution vis viscosity and because of this it's uh, easier to apply the cell lysis and the DNA cutting in a, in a, in a plug, which is a very high, which is a high viscosity uh, solution.
Now what we do is that we insert these plugs inside the wells of the gel. So normally in agar-gel electrophoresis, what we did is that we apply the solution directly in the uh, wells. Here we apply the plug. So we insert the plug inside the well, inside the wells, and then we apply the uh, electrical current in not in one direction but in several directions. So what's going to happen? Is that we are going to apply the electrical um, the electrical current in this way so this is the first uh, direction and this is the second direction and the third direction it's always from negative to positive because as you know DNA are negative and they migrate specifically from negative to positive the angle we are getting as I told you before is 120 degrees uh, so it's a, a optus reorient reorientation uh, angle. And the question now you might be asking, why are we doing this? Why are we changing the direction of the uh, electrical current? So the principle of PFGE is that DNA, the DNA segments elongate in the presence of an electrical field. So in agarose gel electrophoresis, when we apply the uh, electrical field or the electrical current, the DNA segments start to elongate. And the thing is that the smaller DNA segments elongate, elongate faster. The relaxation rate depends on the size. So the larger segment, they need more time. They need time to be elongated. Let's see it this way. So this is a small DNA segment, let's say. It needs a, like several time, like uh, several seconds to be elongated, but as much as the uh, segment is, when, when it's larger, it needs more time to be elongated. And when I have very large DNA segment, that's like as I told you, up to 10 MB or, or mega base pairs, it needs, it needs um, a longer time to be elongated. And then in the agarose gel electrophoresis, the time we apply the, the principle or, or the technique is not sufficient for the large DNA segments to be elongated. And because of this, they block at the top of the gel. They don't have the time to elongate. So what we are doing in uh, PFGE is that we increasing the path of the samples inside the gel. So how are we, are we doing this? In agarose gel electrophoresis, we apply one direction like this. We apply one direction of the electrical field. But in PFGE, what we are doing is that we are taking the samples to the right and, and then we are taking them back to the left. We are taking them to the right and then we are taking them back to the left. So at each time, we, each time we are changing the electrical uh, the direction of the electrical field, uh, we are giving the larger DNA fragments uh, more time to be elongated. So imagine that they are elongated in one, like in one straight line. They, they don't have the time to, to be elongated. But when they are taken in several directions, they have more time to be elongated like this so it's like you can imagine the process is like we don't we are not moving them in one line but we are moving them like in a, a, a we, we call the we call this like in a zigzag uh, path so we are increasing the path of the dna samples inside the gel the thing is that we have several parameters to um, to ensure that when we are applying a uh, pulse field gel electrophoresis. So first is the voltage, which we um, which is uh, measured by V over CM. Normally, vo the voltage used is six V V over CM. Um, you, we should pay attention that the voltage applied in this direction and the time should be exactly the same voltage and time applied in this direction. Why? Because we need the DNAs to get back to their path. So we, so like I have this sample, this sample should stay in this path. So when we are taking this in the right, we should ensure to take them back to the left. So we should apply the same voltage at the same time. So the thing is that the voltage, as I told you, we use 6V over CM, but scientists found that uh, like uh, smaller voltage, like 
4 or 3 V over, or let's say 5 V over CM is better for larger DNA uh, fragments. Why? Because when we apply, when I apply like a small voltage, then let's say 3 V over CM, then the uh, samples will, will move very slow because the voltage is is we, we are using a low voltage so the samples will will move very slow and when the samples move very slow they have more time to elongate the small the the larger fragments of dna they have more time to elongate so the smaller voltage used is the better for larger dna fragments but then we we need uh, much more time to to do the the process the second parameter we should uh, take care about is the angle so normally the angle we are using is 120 as i told you but also scientists found that the smaller angle used so uh like 160 is better for also for larger fragments um yeah so when we use a, a, a smaller angle then uh, it's better for larger fragments because also they will have uh more like a um, more time to be elongated the third uh, parameter is the switching time the switching time is the time from here to in from this point to this point so it's the time apply it's the time applied in one direction so it's from this point to this point or from this point to this point this is what we call the switching time and exactly the same what we uh, what i told you for the voltage, the uh, the longer the switching time is the better for larger fragments because they will have more time to be elongated. You should know something that when we when you apply the ideal parameters for larger fragments, so when you apply a small voltage with a long switching time and a small angle, so these these parameters are ideal for large DNA fragments. Then these. Uh, then you are getting high resolution separating for large fragments but then these parameters are not ideal for uh, small fragments so if you have in your sample large fragments and small fragments so you should find the ideal parameters for both of them the fourth par parameter we should take care about is the temperature of course because pfge is a very long process uh, sometimes it takes uh, overnight so you should uh, ensure that the uh, temperature of the buffer is always in a certain range and sometimes we use pumping uh, of the running uh, buffer through the through a shiller or sometimes we stop the run and we change the buffer completely so these are the most important parameters for PFGE. Now you are getting the results like this. Uh, I wanted to show you this picture because here we have uh, results from the same sample. So here are the same sample but different uh, switching times. So here we are using 45 seconds for as a switching time. And you can see that the smaller fragments are better separated but the larger fragments are not uh, very good separate is like um, not um, perfectly separated uh, when we increase the, the switching time then now the larger fragments they have more time to be separated so you are getting a uh, uh, better resolution for uh, let's say larger fragments and when we use 90 seconds of switching time then it's it's perfect for very large fragments while small fragments are not very good separated so this is a an, uh, an example about how the parameters can uh, can change the 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 um, uh, results we are getting uh, this is everything i wanted to tell you about pulse field gel electrophoresis i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you really enjoyed it please like and share uh, if you have any uh, questions you can write in the comments if you have any suggestion for uh, other topics you can also write in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video bye